Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. This is Native Voice TV. This is Native Voice TV. And this is Native Voice TV. And this is Native Voice TV. People do hear us and remember us that we were on Native Voice television first. Saw them first here. We're watching Native Voice TV. <laughs> Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, we have a guest from a guest tonight, all the way from South Dakota. I'd like to welcome Travis Harden. Welcome, Travis. Now you, you just flew all the way in to be here, right? Yes. Uh, came from South Dakota, from reservation, a Cheyenne River reservation, located in the middle of the state of South Dakota. And where is that? Eagle Butte, you said. Yes, Eagle Butte, South Dakota. And did you grow up there? No, actually, I. I grew up in Alaska. You did? <laughs> <laughs> now tell me the truth. Though. You said there were two tribes and it was like, you're half yeah, what? Give me I'm that. I'm half Ho-Chunk and half Lakota. So that makes you? Half Chunk. Half Chunk. <laughs> I, that was cute. <laughs> <laughs> now your family is from South Dakota. You were raised, or you went to boarding school. Now let's tell everybody who your sister is because everyone knows your sister. The community knows your sister. Uh, my sister is Lakota Harden and she uh, helped help get me out here and kind of came out to do business and also just to visit. We never get to see each other and so it's it's really nice to be out here and be in the community. And, well, it's nice to have such a talented person. You have many, many talents, and I want to hear all about them. But give me a little bit of background of your family. You went to boarding school. Yeah, I went to boarding school at, at a young age of, uh, when I was in second grade, I went to this boarding school called St. Joseph uh, Indian School. And I was just back there last week doing a presentation for the people there. And, um, later on, I, I went back to Alaska but I would spend my summers in South Dakota because my mother wanted me to, to um, know my Lakota people and my Lakota you know, culture. So I was like back and forth. I went to school in the winter in Alaska and then spent my summers in South Dakota where my relatives were involved in the American Indian Movement back in the 70s. So I, um, I used to get up and speak and represent the AIM youth and sometimes I would get up and I would, I was real, you know, we were, it was, things were different back then and we were militant, you know, AIM people. And we, I used to get up and say, uh, talk about how the white man was raping Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And then later on in life, I got, a, ended up having to get a job and work for a living. And I had I ended up building interstates all over the Midwest uh -oh. <laughs> where I found myself raping Mother Earth. Oh, no. So I kind of felt um, kind of guilty about it. Uh -huh. And I wanted to do something about it. So I, I said, well, what could I do? I was just a young man at 18. And all I knew how to do was sing. And so I would go to the, during the layoff season of when you can't pour concrete, I would go to the local Head Start and our daycare and I'd volunteer and teach little kids some Indian songs and um, they liked my the, what I was doing so much that they created a position for me so I would end up working instead of you know collecting unemployment mm -hmm. I would end up teaching teaching little kids and that's how I got into teaching little kids how to sing and that's what I I'm ah. still doing today and I started teaching little kids how to sing uh, 24 years ago. Wow, so you've been doing that a long time. I've seen yeah. some of Lakota's pictures from Alaska and then actually from all over, it seems like you guys are related to everybody. But, uh, so you've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. How did it feel going back to the school? It was felt, real, everything was smaller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it felt good to to be an example for the kids and mm -hmm. see, you know, um, I went to school here and you know, now I'm 
teaching and so it was really good to go back at when I heard the the church bells it really brought back memories and took me right back to when I was a little kid and uh -huh. you know, hearing the church bells have they changed much yeah they changed a lot they're really really you know good now and things were a lot different back then mm -hmm. but um, yeah they're really really good schools now and they're, you know, a lot of children are benefiting from them. Well, it's good if you're able to teach them the music. Now, how do you go about teaching the music? Um, I start off with uh, little kids songs, just like when you um, learn how to play a musical instrument. I, um, I played the trombone for eight years, so I remember when I first started, uh, the trombone doesn't have any keys or buttons, so it's just a slide, and a lot of it's by ear, and you're either sharp or flat. So I believe it really helped me later on life, you know, on, on singing. I can really catch an out-of-tune note, you know, and and so, uh, you know, the, the singing, you know, I think I learned a lot from the trombone, you know, but so now when I teach kids how to sing, I'll use nursery songs, kind of like how I first started on the trombone, and I mix songs that were half nursery and half Indian. Now you have a CD here. And uh, I know we have it up on screen, but um, the NAMI Awards were this past weekend. You won a NAMI Award, what, five years ago, you yes. said? And yes. And tell me about that. Um, we had a little kids' drum group, and we started traveling around to powwows around South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, around the area, and we we would sing, you know, every weekend. Mm -hmm. And so we I took took some of the boys down to Denver where we went to a recording studio and we, we recorded uh, the CD. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it got nominate, nominated into like five categories. But uh, one actually won and it was the best spoken word category. Ah. And they were, at the time they were holding the, the NAMI Awards in Albuquerque. Uh -huh. And it was kind of during the winter and my car wasn't running so good. They wanted us to perform there, but mm -hmm. I didn't want a chance taking a bunch of little boys, yeah. you know, all the way down there. And, and so, you, so you weren't there? I did, yeah, you we didn't make to it go. to the actual awards. But I, I found out from a, a local um, radio station, KLND in, in uh, Bullhead, North Dakota, and uh, they called me up and told oh, me that I... That you won. Yeah, and they... There was also a person there that was working at that radio station that won a, a NAMI award also. Mm -hmm. So he was all excited, so he, he had to call me and let me know. Now, this is really exciting. You were telling me about the cover. If we could look at the cover, see the cover again. Um, the cover was done by Leonard Peltier, and while well, he did that while he was in prison, and and he, he said that we, you know, he wanted us, we could use that for, for, for the, you know, the children's recording. Wow, that's great. Well, congratulations. And on, on the that. last track of the CD, there's an honor song for Leonard that tells him, that it says, uh, it's a hard life, so keep on being, being strong because the people need to be that way. Wow. Well, will you uh, sing one of the songs from the uh, CD? Yeah. Or the, sing us a song? It kind of a, um, it's a first song I teach kind of like for little kids. And I learned it when I was five years old. <coughs> and it just, it's not really a powwow beat. It's just a beat for little kids to hit their leg or their desk. And it kind of goes like this. <coughs> Ask your mother for 50 cents to see the elephant jump the fence. Way, hey, ya, ho, way, yo, hey, ya, hey, yo. He jumped so high, he reached the sky. He never came back to the 4th of July. Way hey ya ho way yo hey ya hey yo A B C D E F G H I J K L N O P Way hey ya ho way yo hey ya hey yo Q R S T U V W X Y and Z Way hey ya ho way yo hey ya hey yo Now I know my ABCs, so next time won't you sing with me? Way, hey, ah, ho, way, oh, hey, ya, hey, yo.
if you listen, the O sound is at the end of the song, and I'm kind of, kind of pushing the, teaching kids how to stop on the end of the song where, way hey ya ho way yo he, ya he yo, and if you do it enough times, you can kind of feel it coming. So um, that's like that's one of the early songs that I learned when I was a little boy, and I, I remember it. Song. And, and now I teach it to kids. And how do you go about teaching them? You were talking me, to me earlier about steps. Yeah, um, I kind of work on the, the nursery songs. Like, for instance, uh, I always tell kids, this is one you might recognize. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. Way, ah, hey, yo. This little piggy had commodity beef. This little piggy had none. Way, ah, hey, yo. This little piggy went hee-hee-hee-ho All the way to Mexico Way, ah, hey, yo and There's that O sound So um, when I explain a song All of our, our songs are like this There's a lead at the beginning Where one the lead singer will sing the lead And then the whole group will second the lead And then it goes through a first part of the song And there's a pause in the middle And then a second part So we're going to go down the stairs I call this the stair song and we're going to get to the pause where we're going to go down to the basement. And when we go down to the basement, you'll hear these honor beats that, that go like this. And what those mean, we're showing respect, honoring, and thanking our elders for everything that they teach us. So I'm going to sing the lead, and then I'm going to second myself, and then go into, down the stairs, and then I'm going to, going to go into the basement. And I'll stop at the end, but... When we get to the O sound, that's where we could either go back to the top of the stairs or stop. And the stair song goes like this. All you need to, to know to sing the stair song, and these words don't, these don't mean anything. It's just a style of changing notes. It's like going la, 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 but we're using a, wait, um, ya, e, he, ya. So all you need to know is ya, e, he, ya goes. Ya, e, he, ya. Now into the basement. And there's that O sound. And we could either go back to the top of the stairs mm -hmm. or stop there. And during a powwow, when the dancers are dancing, when they hear those honor beats four times, they know it's going to come up to the O sound. And that's where they get ready to make a, a stop. And some of them will just freeze or, you know, make a, some kind of stance or, you know, they all do have their own styles of stopping. Mm -hmm. But that's what they're listening is for the O sound. And that's kind of how I, what, how I teach the kids, you know, where to stop. And do you also teach them how to dance? Yeah, I, I used to have a, uh, I used to work up in North Dakota at United Tribes. And I um, t had a dance crew and we used to travel and we'd sing and dance. And um, I would, you know, show them some moves, you know, and it's when I was slim, trim, and fun to be with. <laughs> and uh, You could still dance. Yeah. But I'd like to explain, um, kind of like, if you've never been to a powwow before. And, um, and they, some of our audience hasn't, so. Yeah, so, so it's, it's really simple. It's, it's like, all you really need is um, to know is like, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Then you can get kind of fancy and move around in a circle or... But you, you're just using one, two, one, two, one, two. And then if there's like a round dance beat, you're just going to, it's like a heartbeat. You're mostly just stepping sideways like this. But when, you're, when the drum is on the ground and the drum group is singing and the dancers are dancing, there's a connection between, between Mother Earth and their feet that are hitting the same time as the drum. And they're, they're at one. They're at one with Mother Nature, Mother Earth, and they're um, they're you know they're they're singing and dancing together. 
And it's like a prayer. Hmm. So the kids are pretty receptive to this style of teaching then? Yeah, they, they all like the, the, the piggy song, and I have like a don't talk to strangers song. And oh, I want to hear that one. The, this one's for the, I tell the little kids, this is for your little baby brother or sister. And it kind of gives a message. It goes, <clears throat> it has a, like a crow hop beat. It's a kind of different kind of beat where dancers jump around to the beat. And it goes, don't talk to strangers. Hey, hey, yo. Don't get into their car or take anything from them. Hey, hey, yo. Even if they seem nice, go tell a big friend. Hey, hey, yo. Don't talk to strangers. Hey, hey, yo. Don't get into their car or take anything from them. Hey, hey, yo. That's a great way to yeah, get Yeah, actually, I got across. those lyrics from a good friend named Barney. <laughs> Barney? Yeah. Is he purple? Yeah. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. That's, I think that you can really connect with the kids that way. Yeah, they usually have them get up and dance around, and they like they like jump into the beat. And then at the time, I, I was trying to make a new song that would grab children's attention. So I looked at my own children, and they liked the Power Rangers. <laughs> so I watched it, and it was about these uh, superheroes that change into the Power Rangers. And when they, when the lead ranger blows the whistle, he goes da 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 da, and they change into the Power Rangers. And in the theme song, it says "Go Go Power Rangers." So this is kind of what I came up for, and it goes, "Ya he ya he ya." Adam and Tommy, way ah hey yo, Kimberly and Aisha, way ah hey yo. These are the mighty Morphin Power Rangers, way ah hey yo. Go go Power Rangers, way ah hey yo. Billy, Rocky, Adam and Tommy, way ah hey yo, Kimberly and Aisha, way ah hey. Are the mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Way ah hey yo, go go Power Rangers! Way ah hey yo. And when I sing to the little kids, are like, the I, yeah, Power I was like Rangers. that. <laughs> yeah. So they really, you know, they like singing the songs, and they're a lot of fun to sing. There's also another song that I sing for kids that the uh, Black Lodge singers made, but I kind of changed the lyrics a little bit. And you might recognize the tune of this. It goes, <coughs> Twinkle, twinkle, morning star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a spirit in the sky. that O sound again. I like this song. This is really cute. Yeah, I call it the um, uh, Grandma Twinkle Star song because when my mother and her brothers and sisters were, and my, a lot of my uncles, they were, my, we had our gra their grandmother during the World War II blackouts, they would shut off all the lights and she would sing the Twinkle Star, Twinkle Star song to them. So they eventually started calling her Grandma Twinkle Star, and that's oh, what really? that's what oh, we all called cute. her. So I like to call that song the Grandma Twinkle Star song. Ah, oh, that's so cute. Now you know your sister was telling me that you actually read the obituaries, and if you see that someone has passed, then you'll go sing. Yeah, them. in our Lakota um, ways, we have a song for everything. There's a morning song. There's a song when they eat. There's a you know, we, every event there's a there's an honor song made for that uh, for that special thing, and whenever our someone passes away, 
everybody sh should have a, a going away song. And a lot of times in, the, in Rapid City, um, where I was living, uh, a lot of people didn't know who to contact or mm -hmm. who get a hold of them. And if I knew there was an Indian family, I would ask them if they wanted a song, if they didn't already have one. Because a lot of songs will have, a lot of families will have, you know, a, a, fa a, a favorite drum mm -hmm. in an area or from the reservation and they would get them to come. But a lot of people didn't, didn't know anybody. So I would, if they didn't have one, I would offer a song. And, lo and a lot of times they really liked that, you know, and their mm -hmm. family member would go out with the song and they'd have, you know, going away songs, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of the songs say like, we're gonna miss you, you know, where are you going? And we're, mm -hmm. we're, gonna, we're gonna cry for you, you know. And a lot of them are sad too, so. But oh, they, you cool. know, they, they're going to be in a better place. So mm -hmm. they really um, like the songs. How long are you going to be in the area? Oh, for a good month or two. Oh, I'm, good. I'm so we need everybody out there, especially the schools and the programs. He's here. Take advantage of him being here. You can hire him to come out to the schools. And it's a wonderful opportunity. So I hope you enjoy your visit here. But we're going to put you to work. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you know, the ki I could see the kids really relating to you. I mean, through the music. Yeah, the then their little kids are like at the age where they remember every little thing. You know, you have to really watch what you say around them because they'll they'll. Um, well, there was some slang one time I was I was teaching and I was saying, "Holy, you guys sound good." I said, "Jesus, you sound good." That's some Indian slang, and and then the teacher called me aside and said. Uh, a lot of these um, children are from, um, you know, Christian families, and you're saying holy and Jesus, and I, I didn't even realize I was saying that, you know, just from hearing it on the reservation, holy, you know, and so I, after that, I was really, like, trying to, you know, watch what I say, you know, and, but, yeah, little kids are really smart, and they can learn just like that, they can, they can, like, I've had kids where I could just sing to them one time, and then they'll, You'll hear them singing that song back to you. So do you actually, do they actually learn how to play the drum? Yeah, yep. Some kids are, well, are natural. They'll just start drumming a perfect uh -huh. beat, and other ones take a little more practice. Uh -huh. But I always get my, my audience singing. Um, last year I was doing a, a, a presentation where there was uh, 600 children. And well, I did like 300 in the morning and 300 afternoon. Wow! But I had so many kids coming to my my um, my program that because they they heard the drum and it just kind of drew the children and they weren't going to the other pre presenters and they were just coming to mine. And so I always try to look at my the kids and, and you know make eye contact with them. But I had so many that I had to walk around. So I was I was walk you know having to walk back and forth. And they got a picture of me on the front page of the Mankato, Minnesota newspaper, like, like this. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like I was running in action. You, know? <laughs> you froze in position. Yeah. Speaking of freezing in position, weren't you in a movie? Yeah, I was in a, um, <clears throat> the movie Crazy Horse that was made by TNT. And um, I played an extra. And I was, I was one of Crazy Horse's warriors. Uh, I, I was a lot thinner then, um, <laughs> and could ride bareback and, and try not to fall off my horse. But, um, there was a scene where, uh, we were standing behind a teepee and we were supposed to, uh, come running out from behind the teepee. So when they would say rolling, me and this other guy would stand like this. <laughs> and as soon as they said rolling, we'd come Your running action, out. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I want to thank you for being here. And I'd like you to end, if you could, with the Leonard Peltier song. Yeah, this is a song that was made by Eulali, and they, they let me use it for an honor song <coughs> for Leonard Peltier, and it, and it goes like this. <coughs> Blee 
song. I've always loved that song. Thank you. That's really nice. And I want to thank you for joining us. We are on every Sunday at six o'clock. So tune in and you'll see some wonderful guests like you did this evening. We'll see you again next week. Good evening. You want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. for a change. Watch Native Voice TV, now streaming live Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on San Jose's Create TV Channel 15.